again and welcome back to the Mark IV Sterling Engine Project. Um, so last time we got the engine running a bit more reliably and the diaphragm seals did seem to last for about four hours. Um, since then I've made a few tweaks, um, not big tweaks, but um, things that I hope are going to improve the power just a little bit within the restraints of the design. I'll show you all what I've done now then. Right. So the first change is I've added a counterweight, uh, counterweight to the crank arm. Uh, this is to try and counteract all the weight in the connecting rod, the lever, and also some of the um, the weight in the piston as well. Uh, it's on a different sort of um, plane than the piston, um, but I believe it will help slightly. The next change, I've added a spring um, between the two uh, lever arms uh, that connect to the um, the piston uh, rocking shafts. Um, the spring's a little bit more efficient. Um, in the last video, I had some bungee strap there just to try test the concept. I was fairly happy with it, so now I've replaced it with a more permanent option. So that counteracts the um, basically the compression within the engine. Um, what this will do is, uh, this will de-stress uh, de the linkages uh, going to the, uh, the crank. Um, also, because it's all the engine's more balanced, it will actually slow the motion up. Right, next change, uh, I've actually put some uh, supporting rings on the piston plates. Uh, I did have uh, a nylon ring here back a few videos ago, which I removed. Um, but since I've, I've changed this, the seals to Kevlar, um, or the diaphragms to Kevlar, um, I believe I can actually put that back now. The idea of this is it actually supports them. Um, as the piston goes all the way in, it actually, it actually pushes that last bit of air out. Um, so you get less, less bulging in the diaphragm. What I've done here is I've had spacers here. So there's four mil spacer underneath where it clamps the diaphragm right at this point here. Uh, the reason for this is to reconfigure the center point of um, where the diaphragm is clamped. Uh, the main issue I was finding is when the piston was all the way in, um, the diaphragm wasn't being pulled out flat. Um, so I'm hoping by changing this, um, it will push out that last bit of air um, when the piston is at the bottom of its stroke. I've also added a two millimeter ring on the on the cold side as well. Um, that that wasn't so far out. And one last thing, um, I put a support for the chimney to stop it rattling around. I thought I'd have a go at twisting some uh, flat iron bar um, to create a nice decorative effect. Uh, one more thing, um, I just wanted to clarify the seal material that we're using at the moment. Um, so we're using Kevlar, which is this yellow stuff here. Uh, it's very thin, it's about 0.25 millimeters thick. So what we've done is we've layered four, four of these up um, and these are glued together with silicon in between them and then it's pushed together and allowed to set dry, um, which seems to have worked okay so far, but uh, only time will tell. Right, we've been running for about two hours now, um, so now I'm going to fire it up to its maximum temperature and uh, give it a test run. Right, so next test is 400 RPM. Just trying to get that balance in a minute. Right, right there. Right, so I'll take some temperature um, readings of the cold heat exchanger. So uh, the bit right next to the furnace is over 200 degrees. 
the next one down is about 100 degrees, the next one down is about 50 degrees, uh, and the next one down is between 40 and 50 degrees. Okay, so here's the results from the dynamometer run. So a bit more promising this time. So the maximum power was 87 watts, and that was at 350 RPM. Uh, so not, not too shabby at all. Um, all the other uh, readings are about on uh, the kind of power readings I was getting before. Um, uh, before I was getting 45 watts. Um, so it's a fair increasement. It's still obviously very, very low power, um, but it is a, a fair increasement increase to the power. So there you go, 87 watts. So it's a bit of an improvement since last time. Um, it's not quite as powerful as the last engine I've built, so that would be the Mark III. Um, but it's not too bad, really, in the grand scale of things. Of course, this engine is literally running on a handful of sticks, whereas the last engine, I had to really get the furnace really, really hot with a lot of coal um, to actually get it to, to give it uh, maximum power output. Um, so not too bad there. Um, I'm sort of coming to the conclusion this uh, video is set, really, because I've sort of done as much as I can to the engine without really cutting it to pieces and starting again. Um, it certainly proved a fair bit. Um, the most, the thing I'm most happy about is actually the diaphragms. So far, I think I think we're getting to the point where they're actually getting, becoming reliable now. Um, but only time will tell all that. And I'm going to run it uh, many times throughout the summer um, and prove and put. Uh, I'll I'll keep a log as well, um, so we know how um, how long um, that particular diaphragm has lasted. Um, so that'd be of interest. I'll take you through a, a few bits of the engine I just want to um, to talk about really. Uh, mainly it's it's my opinions on, on why it's performing or why it's not performing, good bits, bad bits and, and all that sort of stuff. So I'll do it right now. I think that the biggest limitations with this engine is actually the hot heat exchanger. It's not the size of it and it's not the surface area of it. There's quite a lot of that. Um, the main problem is that the, um, it doesn't benefit from the radiant heat from the fire. Um, in my previous Sterling engines, I've literally had to get the heat exchanger glowing for it to give um, its full performance. Um, but that's never going to happen with this because it's only being heated by flue gases. Um, uh, radiant heat is really what I want to, want to get from the fire. Um, but all the radiant heat is expelled down here, which is great for combustion, but not very good for heating up the heat exchanger. Um, so in a future design, I think I need to look at um, trying to improve that. Um, a rough order of uh, or rough factor between radiant heat and convection heat is um, radiant heat can give out will transfer about four times as much heat. That's that's a very rough figure because it's a bit it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, but it's uh, it's certainly something to think about in, in the next designs. The cold heat exchangers seem to work out fairly well. Um, one thing I will say. As soon as it gets to about this point here, uh, the temperature gradient stays about the same. So there is a chance that the, the cold heat exchanger is actually too big um, for the actual heater um, size as well. Um, it might change on a hot day when it's struggling to lose the heat, um, but I shall find out this summer. Uh, then that will give me a better um, a better gauge on the, the size of the, the uh, cold side. It would be nice to get these... Um, uh, to get the, the tubes a bit further apart from each other, um, but that is a little restriction of the design, really. So the diaphragm seals, um, it was a bit iffy to start with. Um, I've unbolted and bolted these on more than more times than I care to mention. Um, but now I seem to be getting to a point of things seem to be settling down a little bit. Um, of course, in, the, in a, any kind of future design of the diaphragm seal, I can probably uh, improve things somewhat as well. Uh, one of those would be to actually uh, get the diaphragm a little bit further from away from the furnace. Um, I believe I can do this um, if I if I was going to build another one. And also with the with the correct um, the correct alignment of the diaphragm material and using non stretch material, it has also sorted out the rocking issue that we had before. Um, that was mainly with the rubber we were getting the rocking issue, but with the with a fabric you, you don't you don't seem to get that. Right, so this is the failed diaphragm seals that I've removed from the machine. Um, I'm going to throw these in the bin because I, uh, I don't want to remind myself how much time and effort I put into um, changing diaphragm seals. Right, so the tensioner spring between the, the hot and cold side to um, basically uh, balance out, uh, balance uh, pressure within the engine, uh, sort of against itself some, somewhat. Um, I think this is a great idea. Um, 
thank you very much again for Stanislav um, from Poland for uh, mentioning that one. So uh, that's now become a feature of the engine. Um, I really think that I'd probably put this on any future engine as well if I was using this kind of setup. Uh, balance was improved somewhat with a, um, a counterbalance here. It'd be nice to try and uh, also lose some weight in the linkages um, just to try and uh, stop the uh, problem of balance. This is probably the best engine so far for balance, but it's always been problematic um, for my basic kind of engines. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this build series. I'll be posting some videos of endurance runs and any um, interesting videos of the engine throughout the summer. Uh, thank you for everyone's ideas and suggestions, by the way, because um, it's a great benefit to me um, trying to put this thing together. Um, and also apologies to people that um, uh, put ideas and suggestions forward, but I didn't actually use them because uh, I just didn't, didn't have enough time, really, um, and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. I'll probably be building another engine um, at some point. I don't know when that will be. It will definitely be... Uh, like autumn, winter time, I'd imagine. Maybe before that, if I if, the, if I get the itch. Um, I've still got to uh, accomplish uh, a slightly higher power engine. Um, according to my analysis of uh, various other successful engines, um, this engine, at the moment, I'm about half as powerful as it should be. Um, so I'm going to try and keep going and uh, try and achieve that in a basic, uh, simple, practical design. Um, so until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>